on the Debbie Girl President of Queens. Uh, without the telephone, we'll get this lady's public hearing. Oh, that's funny. It has a weird name on it. Yeah, that's the correct one. Thank you. 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 Glad we were able to update everybody on all our favorite sports teams in New York uh, and their, their actions recently. Uh, and thanks for having us. We're here for a great uh, application for a building that was built 10 years ago in Whitestone. Uh, and, and it's a, uh, called Kitty Academy. It is the main tenant within the building. It's a three-story, 15,000-square-foot building. And it's under approval from the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals because it's located within a manufacturing zoning district. So you are not allowed to have schools within a manufacturing zoning district. Even though it's located in a manufacturing zoning district, it's really a residential district. And I'm sorry I don't have a PowerPoint to, to show you, but there's some of the application materials you can see there. Uh, it's in a residential area of Whitestone, really. It's on the edge of a manufacturing district that was historically mapped along the waterfront, some of which has been rezoned back uh, a few years ago. But it's really, if you can see there, it's in red on the map you're looking at. It's at the corner of a cul-de-sac of, of an L, and uh, it's all basically homes around it. So even though we're presenting to you an application for uh, a property to the manufacturing zoning district, uh, and we're asking you to amend the approval for the daycare, which needs a special permit because it's in the manufacturing district, I wanted to set the picture for you uh, that you're not in a gritty uh, industrial area, but rather in a very pretty neighborhood in Redstone uh, that has uh, got a lot of nice homes around it, and hopefully some more are going to go up around it. And because Queens is such a great place to live, partially because the sports teams are good, uh, there are a lot of children. And uh, there's a public school nearby, and uh, those uh, students, I was just with uh, 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 President Eric Adams yesterday in, in Brooklyn, he was uh, made a statement that uh, most of the children get uh, their formative years are imprinted in ages zero through three. And this is the type of place that does that. They take uh, babies uh, uh, from infants, uh, primarily through ages five years old. Uh, they, could, they used to go up to 12, but they're primarily up to five years old. Uh, and uh, they have a pre-K program within the building, uh, and that's the service they provide. Everybody that uh, goes to their facility is local. They are uh, Queens-centric. It's a franchise. The people that operate it have two in Queens. The other one is on Parsons Boulevard uh, in Flushing, so relatively close. Uh, and there's a huge demand, huge, huge, huge demand. Uh, the reason we're asking, what we're asking of you is because the building is there. It's a three-story building, and it's, as I said before, it's 15,000 square feet. Uh, Kitty Academy, uh, which is what's at issue, uh, it historically had 11,000 square feet within the 15,000 square foot building. Uh, they'd like to ask now to enlarge the space within the building, not make the building bigger, just take more space. So there was an office in the building before with them, a shared space. They're taking over that space they'd like to and take about 2,000 square feet and turn it into a play area for them that they don't have. And I can show you on the plans, but if you look at the third floor of the plans, you'll see a beautiful, uh, I'll take it to the plan sheet if you want. If, uh, uh, they're creating a plan sheet 8 of 15. And, or 8 of 15 is probably existing. That's existing third floor. Excuse me. 15 of 15. I apologize. That was existing conditions. 15 of 15, which you, if you want to compare it to 8 of 15, if you wanted to flip back and forth, on 8 it shows there are offices there where it says multi purpose room for daycare. And if you look at 15, it uh, shows you that it's the multi-purpose room for daycare. So the idea is to take the space that's currently offices, convert it to a multi-purpose room. It'll give the children a place to play inside, and there's a recreational area inside, uh, which is all part of their curriculum. Those are the only changes that are occurring to development. It's not getting any bigger. Uh, there's no parking, re there's a, excuse me, I should say that, there's a low parking requirement for the daycare use. It's required to have eight parking spaces. Uh, actually has a lower parking requirement than the commercial space, so there's no impact on parking. Uh, when we had the community board, it was very well supported, as you can see from the board's recommendation. I think it was like 33 uh, to 3. Uh, and I brought my daughter there that night because uh, she's seven years old, and she uh, got a kick out of seeing it because I thought it would be an easy one. But when we got there, Gene Kelty brought up the fact to everybody that years ago it was a little controversial because of the traffic. And there was a little bit of a conversation about traffic, so I just want to make you aware of it. Uh, it's a busy place in the morning when there are people dropping off their kids, but it works. Uh, and uh, the, the fact that it works is uh, it's shown by the 33, uh, the vote uh, substantially in favor. A lot of those people that spoke about it were very local uh, folks. 
uh, Gene uh, Kelty uh, had some comments, and uh, I think he was one of the people that voted against it. Uh, and it's a, a funny point for those who know Gene, who I love and respect tremendously. On the way out, my daughter, as you would describe a uh, teacher in school, turns around and goes, boy, that man Gene, he's very hard. Uh, and I, I told Gene the joke, he got a, he got a kick out of it. But the, the point I'm saying is that I, I want to let you know that it was very well supported, but there was, were a couple people against it, uh, and one of them was Gene Kelty, and I think that name uh, uh, has uh, more of a resonance maybe than some others may. And, and so I wanted to make you aware of that in case you might be communicating with Mr. Kelty. Uh, having said that, I don't think he was that opposed to it. I think he accepted the fact that schools that has been a good use in the neighborhood. And uh, the owners are, uh, the, you know, the building owner himself is operates out of that building. He has a small office left in that building. Uh, and his name's Tim O'Sullivan. Uh, he's developed uh, a couple of houses in uh, Whitestone right now that he was brought before you that uh, was very well received. There's a GCL application. Uh, so he's a very well known uh, developer in the neighborhood. Uh, he's very well liked. So that's our uh, application. I think it's a uh, positive. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's uh, Gene really appreciated that kick. He's like, good, I want to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it just a few questions of clarification. So, um, so currently the third floor is still off, just office? Yes. Okay, and yeah. can I ask what was there before? I don't know the type of office that was there. It was just a generic, it was an office use. I don't know the, the nature of the business that was. How, how long has it been made? Uh, I don't know, I'm not privy to that information. But it's, you haven't yet. No, it's not set up for the school. It is vacant now, but it's not set up for the school right now. Um, and how long do you anticipate that to take? Oh, the build out? Three weeks. There's not much. It's just the interior walls. Just. The, um, the existing, you said it was a Kitty Academy? Kitty Academy is the, the name. The existing um, daycare that operates, um, are there any PKCs currently? Yes. Do you know how many? I don't know how many. I can give you the exact, I can get the exact number for you. I can get in touch with the operator, so I'm giving that number. No, there's it's no, just it's, it's just accommodating the current use. It's just, just not as desirable right now in its current layout without that play area as it would be with the play area. So it does not accommodate additional students? No, it's not being done to accommodate any more students to the space. Mm -hmm. What you're probably reading, if I um, can read into it because I'm familiar with the application, is the plan is broken down and it shows within the plan the number of students that could be accommodated in each space. So, for example, when you go to the space, probably on page 15, if I go off memory, uh, yeah, drawing 15, it, it tells you 60 children, 12 staff members in that multi-purpose room. Those are the same 60 children that might be at another point in the day downstairs in another room. It's simultaneous. It's not simultaneous occupancy. It's like this room. You moved out of your office to come have the hearing in here. That's how the children will be. It's not as if you created this room and all of a sudden you've hired 20 more staff members in your team to come work within the space. Same concept here. Today. Okay. Thank you. There is capacity in the building for this, but that is not the intention. It's an educational institution. It's got a program. The purpose here would be very transparent. If we wanted more space for the students, we would show you there's more space for the students. They're licensed by the New York State Department of uh, Education. Uh, they're fully regulated. Uh, they are no intent. I can give you some, uh, any affirmation you'd like from them as to what their intentions are so you can be comfortable with that. And the only uh, reason why I ask is, I mean, 25 is not it. Of course. Yes, and listen, I've, uh, I've done this for a very long time. There may be other people that are that may in the future uh, or may have uh, considered to change it uh, and use it in another way than what we're representing. Uh, I'd be happy to give you a letter, though, 
and attest to the fact that the number of students who are uh, intending to stay at that facility. And how many children? 190. 190. 190. So with the expansion, it's not increasing? It's not increasing. Not increasing. 190 students, 46 staff members. None of those numbers are changing. Everything's intended to pretty much operate exactly as is. Uh, you said three members of the three voted against? I believe it was three. Um, can you give us more insight as to why they... I gave you my best. Mm -hmm. Just gave you my best. It was really Gene. It was uh, everything. Gene was, uh, has one vote. Yeah. Well, Gene has some followers. <laughs> so the building that was built 10 years ago, it was originally built as a school. Yes, yes, it was function built. It was subject to the VSA approval before it was built. It's a beautiful building, but I don't know if you're interested. It's done nice. Another question is Does the school do anything in terms of trouble? What was the They have staff members that are out there to try to help people. Uh, it's difficult when there's pick up and drop offs, just like in front of any school. There is a cul de there's an area that's a carve out that was subject to the VSA approval. Uh, that area will probably be used more as a carve out when the street is open one day, when the development down the block that's in the M zone now, ultimately something gets built there. Right now, this is sort of a dead end. So the carve out that was created, although it's a nice carve out, it's sort of a carve out that doesn't really let cars uh, do what they should do, which should be circulate all the way around. Uh, so when people pull up, the cars usually use that whole, there's a commercial building right next door to us that doesn't have heavy traffic, and the parents usually use those areas as a pickup place. Uh, the nice part about it is that this uh, the neighbors seem to be okay with it. We're not getting any complaints uh, recently. There were complaints when it first opened 10 years ago. There's been none recently at all. Uh, and uh, the way it works out, the, the roadway there is rather wide. So there's a there's room for cars. Okay, so but you're saying the school has to get outside? They bring people out to help people. Trouble. Yeah, sure. They shepherd people out. And, Thank you for your time. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the day. Martins from Ackerman LLP for the applicant. I'm also joined by James Coakley representing the owner. Uh, he's available to answer any questions that I may not be able to answer today. I'm sorry, what was your name? Nora Martins, Martins. from Ackerman LLP. No problem. So here today to also discuss a, a school special permit from the BSA. Um, our project is a new special permit though, not an amendment of an existing special permit. Uh, so we're seeking the special permit pursuant to section 73-19 to permit development of a new school here at a daycare facility on a site located at 79-40 Cooper Avenue in Community Board 5. Um, the existing zoning is M11, so a school, use group 3 school use, which includes daycares not permitted as of right, requires a special permit from the Board of Standards and Appeals. You can hear, uh, see here uh, the site location, located on the south side of Cooper Avenue, between 79th Place and 80th Street. The site is very large, it's about 84,000 square feet. Um, currently, um, an as of right self-storage facility, use group 16, is being constructed five stories towards the rear of the site. You can see the site has a long frontage on Cooper Avenue and then it uh, extends fairly deep back into the adjacent M11 zoning district. So while it's all one zoning lot, uh, there'll be separate tax lots, separate entries, essentially totally functioning as separate um, buildings and, and lots for all intents and purposes. So you can see here, it's a little hard, it might be easier to see on the um, printout you have in front of you, the site's location within the M11 zoning district. It's actually right on the border of an R4 zoning district and an R41 zoning district that are adjacent to the site directly across Cooper Avenue and then uh, immediately to 
the east as well. So the self-storage facility is located on the side of the site that's closer to the existing manufacturing uses and the proposed daycare, uh, which will be part of a new building that also contains some commercial use, is located right on Cooper Avenue um, in the more residential uh, neighborhood. Cooper Avenue here, um, you can see the site in a little more detail and you can see also the existing residential uses adjacent. Uh, Cooper Avenue is a very commercial corridor in this neighborhood, a lot of uh, local retail and restaurant type uses and particularly in this stretch of Cooper Avenue, there are a lot of child friendly uses. You have um, the Artistic Stitch Indoor Sports Complex, which is um, at 7908 Cooper Avenue, Triumph Gymnastics, Party Sellers Entertainment, and the Elite Dance Academy. So it's a neighborhood that has a lot of children. Um, a lot. This daycare facility would fit in well with all of those other child-friendly uses. And Children of America, which is the proposed daycare operator here, um, identified a need for additional daycare facilities in this neighborhood. And unfortunately, finding a site where they could of sufficient size where they could build a new facility that really meets their needs, their programmatic needs for a daycare facility, where it's permitted as of right in a residential district, turned up empty. So this site, besides the M1 zoning, was perfect for their proposed development, leading to the uh, this application for a special permit from the BSA. Just another uh, image showing the site. The upper right-hand corner is where the um, proposed daycare facility will be located on Cooper Avenue. Some photos here of the site now. You can see the um, under construction self-storage facility. The proposed development will be a one and two-story community study commercial building, 15,000 square feet of total floor area. 11,000 square feet of that will be community facility floor area, which would be for the daycare facility, which will include 15 classrooms, a fenced rooftop playground, uh, and then the remainder of the building will be nearly 4,000 square feet of commercial floor area in the adjacent one-story portion of the building. They'll provide, they'll provide 32 accessory parking spaces behind the daycare facility. We'll also have 14, I'm sorry, 14 parking spaces in the parking lot for the self-storage building. It's a total of 46 parking spaces for the zoning lot, um, only 28 spaces are required. So the parking that's provided on site exceeds the minimum zoning requirement by uh, 14 spaces. Just a little bit of background about Children of America. The programs serve children from six weeks to 12 years. They operate from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. on weekdays. This facility anticipates approximately 167 children at full capacity, including infant groups, toddler, two-year-old, uh, preschool groups, one pre-K group, they will participate in the universal pre-K program. That will be approximately 20 students. Uh, and one school age group, which is the smallest, you know, the older kids are the smallest uh, demographic served by the daycare. There will be approximately 32 instructors and five staff, and will of course comply with Article 47 of the New York City Health Code for daycare facilities. Some images showing the proposed building. Um, in blue, in the two-story portion will be both daycare. The one-story portion will be the commercial um, portion of the building, which is not subject to this application. And then behind it in white is the self-storage facility. The site plan also showing the location of the proposed daycare in relation to the parking spaces, which will be accessed from Cooper Avenue, uh, separate curb cut, separate parking area from the proposed self-storage facility. We want to make sure that now those uses are separate to avoid any conflict um, between student uh, children arriving for the daycare facility. Zoomed in shot here of the proposed daycare on the ground floor and then the second floor and the playground um, which will be fenced in will be on the rooftop of the one story commercial portion of the building. Some elevation showing the proposed development. And then as part of the BSA special permit application and you know, just part of Children of America's good practice, want to ensure that access to the site is safe. Um, here for a daycare, unlike a school, um, all of the children will be arriving with a parent or a caregiver. Um, they won't be traveling by themselves, but it's still important to ensure safety. 
So we've had uh, Philip Habib and Associates uh, took a look at traffic saf safety measures that they would uh, recommend just to ensure uh, safe access to the school. You can see here some proposed school zone signage uh, as well as some proposed high visibility crosswalks that would be added um, in the area. These measures are subject to review by DOT school safety division. Um, they're currently under review as part of the BSA process. Uh, Community Board 5 voted unanimously in favor of the special permit application, uh, provided that safe pedestrian and traffic measures are provided. So as we discussed with the Community Board, uh, we've been meeting, DOT is obviously reviewing the school, their school safety division is reviewing the BSA application, but we've also been meeting separately, um, the Project Civil, Civil Engineers been meeting separately with DOT to discuss some of the other concerns about traffic on Cooper Avenue that were raised by the Community Board. And we also, um, just lastly, we have a letter in support from Council Member Holden. I'll just submit a copy to that. That concludes our presentation. Happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Ms. Martin. Uh, so you said the UPK seats are About 20. That's the anticipated number. There were some of the other sites that Yeah, so they're a national daycare provider. They have 64 locations in 12 states. In Queens specifically, they have a location in Jackson Heights and also one uh, in Queens Village. And they're currently planning to open a third location in Belrose. Um, do you want the addresses for the locations? So this, uh, including Belrose and Mill Village, that would make four. This would be their fourth location in Queens, correct. And did you say that uh, parking requirement the parking requirement is uh, 28 spaces. 28. 46 spaces are provided on the zoning one. And so we just be that 46 would accommodate instructors and staff? Yes, only um, at Children of America's other locations in Queens, only a fraction of their staff drive to work. Um, but this would accommodate all of those staff that do drive, and it would also accommodate um, parents that are there for five minutes, basically pull in, drop off, and, and leaving their children. There is no tenant yet for that space. I think having some, the community board had expressed previously um, some interest in a health related facility, whether it's uh, urgent care, something like that. So that's you know something that the owner is looking into. It's, it's right now it's a 4,000 square foot space. It could be split into two, 2,000 square feet spaces. You know, it can be subdivided for multiple tenants. And if this location close to the Atlas shops Relatively close, yes. Relative. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly how close they are, but they're nearby. Is it on that map? Mm, let's see. Or is it first? Like, is it off the map? It's not on that map. No, I think. So far enough to not on that No, I don't think. I think it's okay. north, what? Northeast. Right? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know the exact location. Hmm? That sounds like the conversations with you is kind of productive for the yes. school zone the signage. Yes, they actually, um, we met with them on April 14th, and they said they would review further, and they provided some requests for additional information, so we're, we're still working with them back and forth. I'm not sure. James, can you answer that question? Sure. Uh, you Would you mind? Yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I didn't understand. I'm James Coakley, on behalf of the owner, uh, C.S. Cooper Avenue, LLC. Um, yeah, if, if our goal would certainly be to have them in for the 2020 school year. 2021? Yes, correct. Yeah, September of 2020, correct. Correct.
Did you say the building is under construction? The self storage facility is under construction. The, no, we haven't started any construction on the. Um, the only question is um, the daycare itself. Is there, are there any entrances located in Cooper Avenue? There is an entrance on Cooper Avenue, just a second means of egress. The main entrance is behind the building off the parking lot. So the parent wanted to drop off. Um, they have to walk back. I'll show you on this site plan. Right, right. So the um, the site plan there is a parking lot there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that the um, site plan there is a. It's hard to see here. There's a sidewalk along the side of the building, right. um, where you know a parent could walk along to the back to the main entrance, which is, you can see the elevator bank right there. So you're saying they would have to walk back, to the entrance, but there's no direct. No, that would just be an emergency exit only. Okay, so I would imagine most parents would rather just go to the main Right. I think they're anticipating most parents will be dropping children off um, by car. And will there be school staff out there? Because it is a parking lot. So yes, the school, the yes, the school, there will always be a staff member there to make sure the drop off is um, managed, you know, so they're not. Just leaving, you know, no one's dropping off their kids on the side and then the kids are walking by themselves. That's not the role. No. <laughs> no. What about me, even if a parent is dropping off the kid, there would be someone supervising the school Yes, there will be the someone supervising all the drop off and pickups. Parents are not walking the whole way. Yes, yes. Thank you. Great. Um, and do you have any speakers? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation and your time. Thank you. And with that, we have further items on the topic. Public hearing, uh, land use public hearing. Uh, the next public hearing is scheduled for Thursday, May 23rd, 2019, same time, same place. Thank you very much.
Our diesels are multiplying again.